Shalom everyone. God has established his patterns and it's up to this generation to lift up the name of Adonai. We need to cry out for help, meaning divine help coming from God. And if we're on the wrong calendar, we're gonna miss seeing God's patterns. And worse yet, our cries won't be heard. Now on our civil calendar, Tuesday, August 13th, 2024, we experienced a significant day simply called Tisha B'Av or the 9th of Av. This is the most tragic day on the Hebrew calendar. But the sages of Israel say that when the Messiah comes, this day turns to joy. Will we be on the heels of seeing a turnaround to bring Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, and will this day soon be turned to joy? So Tish B'Av, the 9th of Av, is one of the most significant days on the Hebrew calendar. And why? On the Hebrew calendar, Tish B'Av has been a national day of mourning for the Jewish people since Israel became a nation. A day the Jewish people fast and mourn and cry out. And also us Gentiles who are joined and grafted in with the Commonwealth of Israel. We fast and mourn and cry out to the God of Israel. Well, it goes back over 3,000 years to the destruction of the first temple. Fast forward to Jesus' time and after his resurrection and ascension, the destruction of the second temple in 70 AD. This happened along with numerous Jewish tragedies, all on the 9th of Av. The ancient Jewish sages, along with Israel today, are crying out, longing for the time when Messiah returns. Why? Because when Yeshua returns, these days will be turned to joy. The question then becomes, are we receiving divine help? This is mind blowing. We've been exploring God's spiritual physics in the context of what Yeshua is telling us. Whatever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth has already been loosed in heaven. God's spiritual laws of physics dictates that a physical action in accordance with his Torah must be completed on earth in the spiritual dimension first. In other words, in physical to spiritual terms, it's like Newton's law of motion. Every action causes an opposite and equal reaction. This is amazing. In God's law of motion, the equal reaction happens in opposite dimensions, the dimension we know as heaven. This means a Torah action on earth is already the rule of law in heaven, or the parallel dimension. In other words, free will choices can be made on earth aligning with Torah, which is already the rule of law in heaven. A resulting change will manifest on earth, which is God's law of motion. This is the equal reaction. We can't necessarily predict how long it will take God's law of motion to manifest on earth, but we know the motion is put into effect. We've witnessed something of epic proportions through God's divine providence and help that is rocking the earth on a spiritual physics level that every believer needs to see. This happened on the 9th of Av, a day that will be turned from mourning into joy. Dozens of Jewish worshipers openly prayed and bowed in the Temple Mount on Tuesday, blatantly defying the sensitive status quo procedures for the Flashpoint site. They received support from Israel's National Security Minister and another minister, both visiting the site to mark Tisha B'Av, the day of mourning over the destruction of the two ancient Jewish temples that stood at the site. Well, as expected, the Temple Mount was in the news just today after far-right National Security Minister Itzamar Ben-Gvir ascended the Temple Mount and claimed that the policy had changed and that Jews were now allowed to pray on the Temple Mount, although this goes counter to the status quo. The incident sparked an outcry, of course, enough that Prime Minister Netanyahu issued a statement making clear that the Prime Minister and the government decide the policy and that nothing has changed. However, it turns out that the Prime Minister was wrong, according to the amendment to the police ordinance that was enacted before the government's inauguration. The Minister of National Security sets the policy for the Israel police everywhere, including on the Temple Mount. Not the government, nor the Prime Minister. So to get us started, I think we need to ask this question. Should we encourage the government to take back sovereignty over the Mount? Right now, the Jordanian walk oversees it. Why or why not? Rabbi Wuliki, answer the question. Mayan, that's a very important question that not enough people are asking in this war. 
you know, we have a name for this war, right? We call it Harvot Barzel, which means uh, swords of steel. But our enemies refer to this war as the Al-Aqsa Flood. This war that began with an attack on, on towns around the Gaza Strip, an hour and a half drive or so from the Temple Mount, they refer to it by their name for the Temple Mount. That's what we're actually fighting over. We have to listen to our enemies. And if our enemies are saying that this war is really about the Temple Mount, then the real victory, the real, the real way to let them know that we are here to stay and that our narrative of history is the, is the true one and not theirs, is for Israel at this moment to reassert sovereignty over the Temple Mount. So I think that is exactly the move that we should be making right now. And John, what about from the Christian perspective, you know, on rebuilding the temple? Does that have any prophetic implications from a Christian theological perspective? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, this, the, the kind of largely evangelical understanding of the end times that's quite popular is to see something like the Maccabee story play out again, which features a temple, features evil forces trying to defile it, and so on. And the other part of it is theological, is some Christians will believe a restoration of the temple will happen. I believe it's going to happen sometime towards the end of days, but it's blasphemous, and I want no part of it. And unfortunately, I mean, I think that's changing a lot now. And I'm certainly working for that change because I don't believe it's biblical to Christian scripture. Um, but we've come a long way from when in Byzantine times, when Byzantine Christians, when Jews had an opportunity to restore the Temple Mount twice, like Christians in Jerusalem rioted violently trying to prevent Christians from restoring the Temple Mount, holding prayer meetings in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, praying, oh God, don't let don't let the Temple Mount be restored. Why? Because we had this mistaken idea of replacement theology that, that the Jewish faith was now canceled and something new has come. And unfortunately, we passed that on to Islam, which took that on steroids, that the Jewish faith cannot come back to life or somehow it's a threat to our faith. That if Judaism and Christianity should both be canceled religions to, and to see them thriving back to life, to see red heifers arriving in the land of Israel, to see Jews praying on the Temple Mount. That cannot be because it, God is supposed to have canceled this. That view is changing in Christianity. Sadly, I think we, we fed it to Islam. What happened is surreal, ladies and gentlemen, and it hasn't happened since the destruction of the Second Temple. Now, don't get clouded by the outcries of policy and the risk of disputing regional stability allow God to open our spiritual eyes and see his spiritual laws of physics at work. This hasn't happened in history. An ability to teshuv, repent. Israel's ability to mourn on the temple grounds, crying out to Adonai. We just witnessed a loosing on earth of what is already loose in heaven, the return of God's house on planet earth. Don't lose sight, ladies and gentlemen. The manifestation is on its way. Messiah comes to reign on the earth shortly after that for the thousand year millennium. Wow! May we see Yeshua's return in our generation. Shalom.